TXY diagrams. And as you can imagine, we are going to be plotting temperature versus composition of, remember, the most volatile material, typically. So this XA stands for the liquid composition of the most volatile material, A, and the vapor composition of the most volatile material as well. So probably you're wondering, how can we graph three-dimensional diagrams? Nope, actually this is a two-dimension di uh, two diagram. In the y-axis, we have temperature, and the x-axis, we have both vapor and liquid compositions, depending on the area you are located. So the fortunate thing on the temperature diagram is that we have a vapor part right here. I'm going to explain to you in the following video how we read this. But essentially just believe me, this is vapor, this is vapor liquid mix, and this is liquid. So let's say that you have a 60% composition of the most volatile material, as you can see here, there are several ways, if we draw a vertical line, there are several points in which you can ally depending on the composition and the temperature. So we have low temperatures, let's say if you go to the left, let's say that this temperature, I don't know, it's just an example, 75 Celsius, you have something lower than that in this mixture, you will have all liquid. Let's go to this temperature. Let's assume this is 85 Celsius. If this is 85 Celsius, we will have only vapor. And probably you are wondering what happens in between, but between the 75 and 85. Let's say that we have a 80%, uh, 80 Celsius mixture. Well, we will have both of them. So I don't want to get that technical because we're going to see more on this on the following video, but please ensure always that a TXY diagram has a constant pressure. If not given, assume atmospheric pressure. Now this is cool because in this specific case we're going to see later on what is Raoult's law and how we how can we use it to describe these type of diagrams. Remember that this is nothing more than a relationship between Y, A, X, A, Y, B, temperatures, pressures, vapor pressures, and so on. Okay, and it, very important, guys, I'm going to explain you bubble point temperatures and dew point temperatures as well. But for now, okay, as you can see here, boiling of a liquid will have several points, that's true. So probably you're wondering how can we have a mixture that boils at 85 Celsius, boils at 78 Celsius, 70 Celsius, uh, maybe even 65 Celsius. How is that possible? Well, this is possible because of the mixture between. Okay, so before continuing, let me explain you what is BPC, which is bubble point, and DPC, dew point. 